Hello, welcome all. Today, we will look at punctuations. What in punctuations? Pauses. So, the three different markers that we are going to cover in this particular module is semicolon, colon and apostrophe. Let us get started with semicolon. So, a semicolon is used to introduce or combine two closely related sentences. So, a semicolon is used to combine closely related sentences. Let me give you an example. I went to see the jumbo circus with my kids. I thought it was terrible. They thought it was great. So, I thought it was terrible is my opinion and they thought it was great is their opinion. And therefore, these two sentences are closely related. Now, how do I connect these two sentences? There are two ways. One is you introduce a comma, in which case you uh, connect these two sentences with a conjunction. And in this sentence, what conjunction do you use to connect these two sentences? It is but. I thought it was terrible, but they thought it was great. Now, there is another way of connecting these two sentences that is by introducing a semicolon. But when you use a semicolon, you should not use a conjunction like in the previous example. So, when you are in bringing together these two independent clause, you could either connect them using a comma and therefore introducing a conjunction or you could connect these two sentences using a semicolon. Now, when you use a semicolon, make sure that you do not leave a space before it, but you should definitely leave a space after it. Now, how about sentences with conjunctive adverbs? I am going to give a couple of more examples with um, conjunctive adverbs. So, what are conjunctive adverbs? You must have heard of words like however, therefore, of course, in fact, for example. These are all conjunctive adverbs. Now, let us look at the example. She has not got many friends. However, everyone likes her. So, this is an example that we have used in the previous section on commas as well. I have uh, taken another sentence again used in the previous section. My dog knows many tricks. In fact, he can bark on command. So, I do not have to explain uh, why there is a comma here um, after however and in fact that is something that we have discussed previously. But if I need to connect uh, two sentences in which the second sentence starts with a conjunctive adverb, the question is how do I connect these two sentences with a semicolon? That is, you put a semicolon, but you do not delete the conjunctive adverb unlike the previous case of conjunctions. So, therefore, you keep the however here. Def Likewise, you keep the in fact intact here. Okay? So, you should not be writing something like I thought it was terrible, semicolon, but they thought it was great. This is a wrong sentence. Um, similarly, you should not write something like my dog knows many tricks. This is also wrong. 
because in this case you have deleted the conjunctive adverb. You should be deleting a conjunction and not a conjunctive adverb. Okay, I hope I made that point clear. Now let's get to colon. So the colon introduces information after an independent clause. This is very important after an independent clause. What's an independent clause? A complete sentence. A complete meaningful sentence is an independent clause. So let us get to the use of colons. You use it to introduce information in the form of lists. So I have given two examples. Here are the three states that starts with the letter A. Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh and Assam. I have several favorite genres of movies, drama, science fiction and mystery. So, you are introducing a list here, right? Therefore, we can use a colon to introduce this list. Now, um, it need not be always a list that needs to follow a colon. A clause can also be um, introduced after a colon. Examples of that is uh, given here. Never forget this point, think before you sleep. So here after the word point, you introduce the independent clause, think before you sleep by inserting a colon. And where are you inserting it? After the independent clause, never forget this point. So, what you need to make sure is that when you use a colon, do not add a space before it, but you should definitely add a space after it. Now, look at the second sentence here. Never forget this point that you must think before you sleep. Of course, you can, there is nothing grammatically wrong about that sentence, right? A grammatical sentence. Never forget this point that you must think before you speak. Now, can I introduce a, or is it right, is it appropriate to introduce a colon after that? What do you think? Is it appropriate to introduce a colon after that, like you see on the slide? Well, the answer is no. Why? Because colon needs to be introduced after an independent clause. Suppose I put a colon here. How, do, how, how does the sentence read? Never forget this point that. Never forget this point that what? So it is not an independent clause. It is not a full sentence. Therefore, it is wrong to insert or to introduce a colon before a dependent clause. Another example of this is the world is a stage, play your role well. Okay. So now, how about having a practice um, exercise or you know solving a practice exercise? I have given you uh, five sentences with no commas, semicolons and colons. Add comma, semicolons and colons wherever necessary. Pause the video, work on these sentences and then I will discuss the answer. Let us look at the answers. In front of him were the following. Colon. Why? Because we are introducing a list, we are introducing an information. Cheesecake, apple pie and other delicious delights. So when there are multiple uh, items on the list, you need to separate them with a comma except the last one. Therefore, you see a comma between cheesecake and apple pie and not between apple pie and delicious delights. The second sentence, the man looked outside and shied. It has been raining all day. Here, you see a semicolon. Why? Because these are two independent clause. The man looked outside and shied and it had been raining all day. So, you have two independent clause and when you connect two independent clause using a semicolon, you do not use conjunctions. Okay, 
the third sentence is it was an incredibly hot day again an independent clause our ice creams melted within minutes so the same explanation as the second sentence the fourth sentence is i like many healthy foods carrots broccoli apple spinach and oranges same as the first one you need to separate items in a list using comma and you don't put a comma here because except the last item you separate every other item using a comma it was a dark night the moon hid behind a cloud this is the fifth sentence again two independent clause therefore you need to put a semicolon okay let's get to the final marker apostrophe so where all do we use apostrophe one is to mark contractions what are contractions when we omit letters um then it's called contraction examples are you must have um seen people using this instead of this right this is a contraction of i am which is am is a contraction of i am similarly doesn't is a contraction of does not so here the letter o is omitted and in its place you have an apostrophe here the letter a is omitted and in its place you have an apostrophe so i hope you understand what contraction is so you use apostrophe in place of omitted letters in this case let's look at the examples given here i am a mathematician so here you read it as am instead of i am so instead of saying i am a mathematician you could say i am a mathematician instead of saying she is a beautiful girl you could say she is a beautiful girl instead of saying he would never come late you could say he would never come late instead of saying sita does not like chocolates you could say sita doesn't like chocolates now when you write doesn't i have seen a, a lot of students using or committing this mistake which is doing this this is wrong you use an apostrophe in place of the omitted letter so in this case let's in this case does not o letter is omitted and therefore we use an apostrophe in place of the omitted letter o okay now there is another rule about using apostrophe that is you cannot combine more than two words let me explain that with this example they are not celebrating diwali so here there is no contraction in this sentence is no contraction right now in in this sentence there is a contraction that is instead of they are you use the expression they are right now there is one more way of writing which is they are not celebrating right so you could say they aren't which is a contraction of they are not right so are not is contracted here never like in this example like what you see here never do this in this case you are trying to contract and bring together three words so you cannot contract more than two words 
So, this is wrong, ok. Keep that in mind, you cannot use an expression like this. Now, apostrophe is also used to mark possession. Examples are given here. Have you seen Leah's new pet? Leah's new pet meaning the pet that Leah owns. Possession or ownership can be marked using an apostrophe and that is the example here. It is my mother's birthday today, which is the birthday of my mother. This is the world's fastest animal. That is the fastest animal in the world. Now, this is quite simple. A lot of us know about this. You know, um, whenever there is uh, a possession, you mark it with a with an apostrophe. But how about those words or the nouns that end with an S? Should I use an apostrophe? And if I use, should I put an S after the apostrophe? These are all the doubts that we have. Let's sort it once and for all. Okay. The S teacher praised him in front of the class. Then you have Racist teacher placed him in front of the class. So, this is the name of the boy, Shreyas. So, this word ends with yes, alphabet S or sound yes or sound sir. Now, if I have to mark possession on this particular word or noun, sh the question is, should I write it like this or which of this is right? This is the question here. Well, the answer is both are right. Both these forms are right. You could use it the way you like. Now, let us look at the second example. He has two years experience as a doctoral fellow. So now this is the word. Can I use this? Is it the question is, is it appropriate to use this or this? Why is it different? Because Shreyas is a sing singular noun here and this is a plural noun. Years is. Okay. So, well, the answer is when there is a plural noun like years and then you want to say years is. Okay. In that case, you do not put S apostrophe S. Okay. What is right is this. So, what is right is this and not this. So, this is wrong. So, she has two years as experience. Do not put an S after the apostrophe. This is the right way of using an apostrophe in this sentence. That is, in case of a plural noun, do not add an S after the apostrophe. Whereas, when it is a singular noun, you may or may not use yes after the apostrophe. Now, the next category is that of possessive pronouns. Yours, theirs, hers, ours, its. These are all possessive pronouns. Let us use that in a sentence. Uh, given two example sentences. This room is ours. Is this pen yours? In these two sentences, that is when we use ours and yours as possessive pronouns, Never use an apostrophe. The rule is very simple. I have uh, seen a lot of kids um, make this mistake in letter writing. Okay. Um, they commit the mistake of putting an apostrophe here. Yeah, that is wrong. Now, <clears throat> through this, let me also um, 
bring to light the difference between possessive pronoun its and the contraction its. I am going to bring an example and this is the example sentence. The cat bit its nail which means the nail of the cat. This is a possessive pronoun. Here you should not be using an apostrophe whereas contraction its stands in place of it is or it has based on the context. So, look at these two sentences. It is time to start the debate. Here, it is not a possessive pronoun. This is a contraction. Why? Because the its here stands for it is. Now, read the sentence in that uh, with this. It is time to start the debate. Similarly, it has been a long time in the second sentence. So, it is here stands for it has. It is time to start the debate and it has been a long day. So, in these two places, you need to use an apostrophe because they are examples of contractions. However, in the first example, the cat bit its nail. Um, here we are talking about the nail of the cat, right? So, um, you should not be putting an apostrophe because it is a possessive pronoun. Now, coming to the practice questions, use apostrophe wherever necessary. First one, they do not know him. Second, where is Kavita's book? Third, is this house yours? Fourth, Ali's parents are very proud of her. Fifth, the dog bit its tail. Pause the video for a minute, work on these uh, sentences and let us discuss the answer. Okay. They do not know him. So, here you have used a contraction instead of do not. Where is Kavita's book? Again, possession. Kavita's book, the book of Kavita. Therefore, apostrophe here. Is this house yours? You do not use an apostrophe here because it is a possessive pronoun. Alice's parents are very proud of her. Both of these are right. Why? Because Alice is a singular noun. Therefore, this is possible. The dog bit its tail. Why does this not have an apostrophe here? Because it is not a contraction. If it is a contraction, then you should read this sentence as the dog bit it is tail or the dog bit it has tail. Uh, this does not make sense, right? These two sentences does not make sense and therefore, you should not have an apostrophe there. Um, I, I hope I made all of uh, this clear. Um, concepts covered under semicolons, colons and apostrophe. I hope you like this class. I will meet you with a different topic on a different day. Until then, stay safe. Take care. Bye.